Mary. So don't worry, I, I can imagine you're all hungry. I'm only going to keep you for two hours and a half or so, okay? <laughs> Talking about women in coffee. So hopefully this is not going to be boring and I have a few things to share with you, especially because I'm particularly proud of what's happening in Rwanda in this moment. All over, all over the country, coffee-wise and not coffee-wise. So let me see if I can make this happen. I need the next slide. Okay. Nothing less than a Nobel Prize winner to start our very great conversation. So study after study, we're confirming that there is no development strategy which is more beneficial to society as a whole, meaning women and men, which involves women as a central player. No other policy is as likely to raise economic productivity, lower infant and mortality, or improve nutrition and promote health. It has been seen that in fact, when, a women, when women play a central role, we have healthier families, they are better fed, and their income are better savings and reinvestments go up. What is true for families might be true for communities and hopefully cities and countries. Let's see what happens as far as the numbers in the world of coffee. I am the director of coffee culture for Il Café. So a few things I'm gonna say about what happens from the beginning before we get to the final cup of coffee. Ili buys from uh, more than 100 countries. Of course, we distribute in 140 countries. Um, there are more than 20 million people working in the company, with, for the company and for their companies to produce coffee. Many of them are very small far, uh, farmer holders. 70% of the workforce of the growing coffee is made by women. 25% of them are actually managing the farms. So 70% women, 25% are managing farms. SDG number five, engaged and encouraged by the UN, talks about gender equality. Now we have a systematically lower access to resources such as land, credit, and information than men. Might not be true for Rwanda. This often results in a measurable gender gap in economic outcomes, including the yields, productivity, and farm income. Now the gains, the gains from closing the gap are very important. And we are encouraging both public and private sectors to do something to close this bridge. We need to do this through empowerment and, of course, education. Why education? Because education is the only way that we can create access. And access automatically creates health and wealth, if we want, from the beginning to the latest part of the stage in production. Now, as far as Italy, our mission is to delight all those who appreciate beauty and flavor worldwide with the best coffee nature can offer using the best technologies with the best art. Our vision is we would like to be the standard for coffee excellence and culture worldwide. Culture, I would like to underline, because culture creates training and culture creates the understanding and the growing. Innovative company that offers the best products and place to enjoy them, and thanks to this, we grow within the premium segment. Now, how do we do this? Through which, which values? We are a stakeholder company, not a shareholder one. We want to improve quality of life through ethics and excellence. What do we mean by ethics? Ethics is transparency, long-term long value, sustainability, personal growth, meaning personal and for our farmers, and for the people that work in the company, so collaborators. Excellence is passion for quality, beauty, and continuous improvement, including innovation. As I said, we don't define ourselves as a shareholder company, but a stakeholder one. 
Why? Because we take care of what happens from the beginning of the cup until the end. An example of this you will see in a few minutes, because I'd like to speak more about alien women and our commitment, which has been driving, driven from quite a long time. We have a few projects that I'd like you to come through with me. So this is the story about women in the world of coffee. These women were totally abandoned there in Costa Rica by the men when there were problems in the plantations. They had no idea on how to grow these plantations. They During the early 90s, the men left the coffee plantations. You can raise the volume and listen. I'll left finish alone with, with their babies, the kids. Teníamos mucho miedo. Las familias estaban desintegrando. Nosotras teníamos que hacer algo. Y pensamos que por qué no café. Por eso nosotras construimos todo lo que ustedes miran aquí. No teníamos ni idea cómo se tostaba café. Y echamos el café a la máquina y lo quemamos. Asomobi was the first women's mill in Costa Rica. And uh, the coffee was terrible. Ella nos dijo, yo para el café de ustedes no doy ni un cinco. And because I was the only women coffee exporter, they kept on calling and calling. I said, these women deserve help. They're hungry to learn. The next crop, they did a great job. Nosotros lo que hacíamos era dar y trabajar, dar y trabajar. La primera persona que se dio cuenta del incendio fue mi madre, gritando, se está quemando a su móvil. En ese momento empezamos a hacer el dibujo de lo que íbamos a hacer. A pesar de todos esos miedos, seguir en el proyecto, ¿verdad? Women in other parts of the world are seeing what their sisters in other countries can do. They have a voice they did not have before. They discovered their voice. So a small section of the world is a docufilm which was filmed by Leslie Chilcott. Uh, Asomobi is Asociación de Mujeres Organizadas de Violet. These girls are in uh, Talamanca in Costa Rica. Through what we managed to do, thanks to Willy and the team that works with me under Coffee Culture today, we helped them to understand what they had to do in order to get the farms going on and increase the productivity. I think you can see their faces and understand what happened. Um, it was 17 years in which this story took place. This is only a few minutes video, but I think it manages to transfer what went on. Alanis Morissette, by the way, she really liked the story, even though the story has a terrible part of it when the fire comes and these women see everything totally uh, gone. I think this would be terrible for a man or a woman when you see that all that you designed and all that you constructed simply leaves. So starting again is not easy ever. Women in the World of Coffee is a congress that we then make, made come alive to put more women in the world of coffee come together from all the different countries so that could share ideas in advocacy and try to make a better future by networking and by taking ideas and more knowledge one from each other. We have a Master in Economy, Coffee Economy and Science, thanks to University of Coffee and the Ernesto Illi Foundation. We managed to have scholarships. Our candidates are usually around 300. This is the 10th consecutive year of our Master. 
and we've had from 2011 to 2018 61 women and they all did an excellent job. I'm having a group with me now with a thesis and I, I can tell you that they're really, really very well prepared. They come from producing countries or not, but they are very international. They come from all over the world. The master is the only master in coffee economy and science and we train them in six months. It's more or less 400 hours of training and uh, 12 modules that we do and then there is a period of working in the company to understand what means putting into place what they learned. The master teaches from biology to agronomy and management everything that is needed to understand the world of coffee. From the cup, from the seat to the cup, sorry. Now, I will probably almost leave you with another short video. Um, the International Coffee Organization, which is born under the encouragement of the United Nations, has uh, on October 1st, every year, what we call the World Coffee Day. Ili Cafe usually celebrates on October 1st with a project which is called hashtag thanks for the coffee. Now in 2018, the ICO, the International Coffee Organization, launched a very interesting team. It was women in coffee. Now what happened is that we tried to bridge the gap from consumers to the growers. And since we have owned cafes and franchised cafes all over 140 countries, I'm going to show you what happened. The project is called Half a Cup. And from San Francisco to Seoul, Trieste, Tokyo, and Vienna, this is what happened. No. Next one. It's another video. Last video. Sorry, it's okay. It's okay. You're good. It's okay. Muchas gracias por hacer el estupendo café que cada día mejora nuestra mañana. Vamos, vamos, miren lo que trajeron. ¿Qué, mi amor? Aquí dice que, ¿Qué? en ocasión del Día Internacional del Café, las personas de todo el mundo dan gracias a quienes hacen posible la existencia de la bebida que tanto aman el café. Dan gracias a los cultivos. A ti, mamá. A ti, papá. Papá. ¿Qué, mi amor? So the interesting news is that hopefully next year the video that I will show will have Rwanda as a protagonist because the best coffee this year was won by a beautiful lady called Filote who produced the best coffee according to the professional jury and to the consumer's jury. So in 2019, we're going to celebrate on October 1st 
on a very special story on Rwanda. I think that the message is, we're not here to talk about women because I'm a woman, or some of you are, and some of you are definitely not, but because 70% of the people that work in this industry are women. Okay, thank you so much.